Hi, I'm Chuck Colson with this week's Two Minute Warning. As you probably know, the big winners in Egypt's recent parliamentary elections were the various Islamist parties. As expected by anyone who was paying attention, the Muslim Brotherhood received the most votes, about 40%. Less expected and even less welcome was the showing of the ultra-Islamist Salafists, compared to whom the Muslim Brotherhood looks like the Republican Party. They received at least 25% of the vote. The results put Islamists in a position to rewrite Egypt's constitution. Now that certainly isn't what democracy-craving protesters defying the Mubarak regime had in mind. In an ironic twist, the only thing standing between Egyptians of a more liberal bent and Sharia law is the Egyptian military. Following the election, the leader of the ruling council, General Mukhtar Amula, told Western reporters that the newly elected Islamist parliamentarians won't be allowed to impose anything the people don't want. Really? And despite the election results, the ruling council believes the Egyptian people don't really want the Islamists, especially the Salafists, in power. After all, as al Mula told reporters, why would the Egyptian people vote against their own best interest? But folks, that's exactly what the Egyptian people did, especially the poor. They voted for the Islamists. And the Islamists want to install Sharia law, not democracy as we know it, especially not a democracy that respects human rights. Just ask Egypt's Coptic Christians. All this puts the United States and other Western countries in a real bind. We've been calling for democratic elections and the end of military rule in Egypt. But we did so without understanding the worldview of the Egyptian people. We didn't understand that the alternative to military rule in Egypt isn't an Arab version of the British Parliament. It's something more like Gaza and Iran. It seems that Western leaders have forgotten the answer to what made liberal democracy possible in the first place. Writer Fareed Zakaria, who is a Muslim himself, credits Western Christianity for the development of ideas about freedom and democracy. It was Christianity that introduced the concept of the imago dei to the West. It was Christianity's insistence on human dignity and individual worth that made our ideas about human rights possible. And it was Christianity that taught the West that there's a source of authority apart from government, a source, in fact, from which government derives its authority. It's not a coincidence, therefore, that the most robust liberal democracies are countries or their colonies whose institutions were shaped by Western Christianity. This isn't to say that liberal democracy can't take root in the Arab world. It may one day. But it's foolish to think that today is that day. The general's claims notwithstanding, Egyptian voters have spoken, and their message is clear. The Arab Spring has given way to a potentially harsh winter for true democracy in the Middle East. The lesson to us, worldviews do matter. And our government better think twice about this before it intervenes in foreign lands. I'm Chuck Colson. That's this week's Two Minute Warning.